Happy World Carnivorous Plant Day! This is Vincent over here at Carnivorous Greenhouse. I'm hanging out inside of one of my indoor greenhouses and today I'm going to be speaking about the cool plant Genlisia, a plant that not a lot of people seem to collect, especially here in the US, but it's definitely a cool plant. Um, it has a lot of cool features that differentiate it from others. It's got cool flowers, so Let's dive on in and see what's so cool about them. And so how these traps basically work is the small organism goes in through the end uh, because of little nectars inside and it crawls inside and there's little hairs that stop it from being able to go backwards. So it just keeps crawling through until it gets uh, to the digestive enzyme closer to the plant. So it's kind of a, a weird one in that sense. Maybe sort of similar to like Darlingtonia, um, but just on a way smaller and longer trail. But pretty effective, looks pretty cool. Uh, they look really great when you have pots that uh, kind of show the traps. So I've been experimenting with mesh nets and water beneath so you could actually see the traps, but I haven't actually got a good design going yet. Um, but yeah, that's how those work. And honestly, they're fairly easy. Like a lot of plants in the carnivorous plant world, we use uh, rainwater, distilled water, um, reverse osmosis, personally. The media is going to be usually peat, perlite, uh, a little bit of sand kind of helps. It doesn't need to be super boggy. And I kind of like a little sand to kind of hold it together a little bit, especially when you want to take a peek inside to see the traps. Um, as far as light, I would consider it um, about a medium level, personally. Like, I keep them the same as my Drosera um, indoors. So grow lights, nothing like insanely strong, like um, like maybe slightly more than a Nepenthes would prefer. I mean, they are flat rosettes, so you have to consider that, you know, they're low to the ground. It's very easy for these plants to get covered by other plants, uh, which is probably why the stalks of the flowers are so long so they can reach up above where pollinators will actually come um, the only condition that seems to be fairly important out of the norm I guess would be humidity if you want them to grow fairly well they will need a little bit of humidity even without the humidity they might grow okay but they might not flower which is a big appeal, considering the foliage is all generally similar. Other than that, I mean, they're, they're fairly straightforward. It's just a different carnivorous plant with a more unique style of, uh, of a trap. You know, a lot of these don't get appreciation because you look at the top and you don't see, you know, a pitcher, you don't see a trap. It's underneath the soil, but they definitely do have awesome flowers. They have really awesome traps and they're just, you can put it with anything. It doesn't have to be its own plant, just like Utricularia. You can put it with other plants that you keep moist. You could have this with Drosera. Um, you could have a, a terrarium or something, or even with non-carnivorous plants. Let's 
see, as far as troubleshooting, the only real thing that is a semi-threat to uh, Genlicia, other than drying out, would be uh, being overgrown by moss. A lot of moss, like star moss and other, other taller mosses, tends to grow higher over the Genlicia, and then it also grows so thick that it just forms this decay layer um, because it, it's not breathing. It's literally just moss. So usually when you see moss start growing, if it's that kind of moss, you want to just separate it. I mean, I've had some of these be covered by like a star moss for months and they're still fine. But eventually if you don't clear out that moss, the Genlicia will be gone by the time you look under there. You won't see any leaves, you won't see anything. Gonna see if I can get a little close up of the flower. Let's see where we're at. There we go. Have a really nice flower. And like I said, they come in like white, um, purple off colors, uh, some come in a yellow color. They just make really nice flower stalks, considering that the flower stalks make multiple flowers. So if you keep them happy and humid, you will see many nice flowers. All right, so as far as propagation, Personally, I just divide plants by ripping them apart. So this one, I'll take a piece out, pot this up, take a piece out, pot this up, and I'll just repeat that multiple times and let them naturally uh, kind of fill their pots instead of trying to pull them apart and do it uh, via like leaf pullings. However, I do have these that I have tried via leaf pulling and somewhat successful. Let's see. You can kind of see this one. This one's growing from a leaf pulling. Um, so it's definitely possible. But I prefer usually just to let them grow out like this. It's the easiest, it's the safest for the plant. You don't have to rip one plant up into many plants and hope that they survive. Like once they're this big, it's super easy to divide and they'll just grow easily. Then you just toss them in their own pots and call it a day. All right, so lastly, I'll just give you guys a little tour of what I've got. I don't have too many uh, different species, but I do have a lot of divisions. Most of these are like the species I don't have a lot of still growing out. You can see all the flowers sticking up. And this is pretty much where I keep them. I always keep it pretty full of water. You can see a little biofilm there. Um, I like to keep it pretty wet. Um, I do have some fans that kick on, that being one of them. You can see the moss 
like I was talking about, can kind of overgrow it. Um, so most likely these, when I go to divide, I will be removing the moss and just completely separating it so that they can kind of start fresh more along like those lines back there. Um, but yeah, if you get a lot of them, you'll have a ton of flower stalks coming up. It's been pretty hot in this tent, so my temperatures in here, this fan only kicks on when it hits 90 degrees, so it's even during winter, it was over 90 degrees in here. They do appreciate a little warmth. I don't think they need to be in the 90s, but that's just, you know, that's just how they have to grow in my section. I'm sure if you keep them a little cooler, they might grow a little faster, maybe a little healthier. Um, but who knows? Like I said, I'm not really an expert. I'm just someone who collects and grows them and has a few that I can show off to kind of get more people interested. So. Hopefully you found it interesting and hopefully more people will be able to obtain some Gymnesia because like I said, they're super interesting, especially in Europe. I know a lot of people have the better pots that kind of show off the traps. So hopefully next time I will have pots like that to show off. Hopefully you guys found Genlicia a little bit more interesting. If you don't have any, you should definitely go out and find some. You can buy them online. I'm sure most places will have some in the US. I sell them. Um, there's other stores that sell them in Europe. I'm thinking they're a little bit more popular, so you can probably find them out there. But um, if you can get them, you definitely should try. They're super awesome plants. You can put them in a terrarium. You can put them with other plants. You can put them in almost anything. Um, you know, just keep them in some light, humidity. They're really not as hard as any other plant really, you know? They just need the basics. So go out, enjoy them, see those beautiful flowers, see the yellow ones, see the purple ones, collect them all and have a happy, World Carnivorous Plant Day. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.